Classic Restos, proudly brought to you by Shannon's Insurance, Hare and Forbes Machinery House, and Pace Farm. Hello and welcome to another exclusive episode of Classic Restos. Of course, filmed here in Detroit, Michigan, United States of America, thanks to Shannon's. And there's some more great stuff coming right your way after this. It's thanks to Shannon's. Ask about multi-policy discounts and sign up for the Shannon's Club. Call 134646 for a quote and see more at shannons.com.au. And Heron Forbes has the range. Buy online at machinerihouse.com.au. As you know, our classic vehicle hobby over time has exploded. This propulsive interest amongst enthusiasts comprises original, restored and then there is the next level and that is custom. Body fabricators, well they're craftsmen. The finished products are works of art and there's one place in Detroit that can take your ride to the next dimension. So if you're looking for some real appeal, welcome to Mob Steel. This is Mob Steel a design and a build company that manufactures automotive aftermarket products and builds custom cars while celebrating the history of the automobile and one of the most iconic places on earth, the Motor City, Detroit, Michigan. These guys start with Detroit's finest vintage cars and turn them into modern day menacing street machines. There is no level of creation here just your imagination. The cars built are not just cars. These cars are a part of American history. Vintage Detroit steel, not some fiberglass reproduction. Steel with a soul and a story. The blood, sweat and tears of family and friends are in the motors, the frames and the bodies of these cars. At Mob Steel, everything is taken to the next level. Fletch, welcome to Mob Steel. Uh, it's always nice to have friends visit, especially from another country. Uh, we're really proud of what we got cooking here. Uh, you know, we grew up in the automotive industry. We're a product of our environment, like everybody else around here. And, um, you know, we have fun with these cars. We're very fortunate that we get to come in here and work on these great cars that were built in the 50s, 60s, 70s, and, and most of all, we get to celebrate those cars and the people that built them and really what shaped us. So, you know, when Mob Steel got started, essentially we were just a hot rod shop. So we would have a customer bring in a car and they would have, you know, some sort of an idea what they wanted to do to it and we would fix up the car for them, you know, whether it was air ride or painting or, you know, whatever they wanted. Uh, and we were essentially just a basic hot rod shop. But then as Mob Steel grew and became its brand, um, you know, we started to be able to build the cars we wanted to build. And that's really what gave us our identity. We were into the big body cars, the Lincolns and big caddies and stuff like that, uh, which at the time wasn't very attractive. But we built a lot of those cars and it really kind of created the Mob Steel brand. Uh, and then eventually we had people coming to us and just saying they wanted a Mob Steel car. So it got really exciting. We had customers that were athletes and entertainers and our cars reached a whole new level. We had guys coming in to work for us like Ron and Doug and everybody else that, that, that's here right now and guys in the past that were incredible craftsmen and our product really became the sum of its parts. So you know, we continued to make you know, better and better and better vehicles and that was really exciting for Mob Steel. Our brand started to grow, our customer base started to grow and then eventually we started getting involved in corporate stuff. You know, next thing I know, we found ourselves building cars for Ford Motor Company and FedEx and all these other big companies because we had an audience. And, uh, and we started to really design and build uh, some pretty neat stuff. We had the opportunity to start a wheel company, Detroit Steel Wheel Company. Um, our mission was to actually manufacture a wheel here domestically in the U.S. It became a lot more difficult of a task than, than I anticipated. Uh, it wasn't the concept or the timing or building a quality product or even finding a customer. The, uh, the challenge actually became manufacturing it, not only here in Michigan, but just in the U.S. Uh, you know, it was, it was unbelievable that, you know, our, um, you know our, our, our challenge went from, you know, can we launch a product and can we sell this to, 
can we even make it here? So that really opened our eyes to a major problem that we've experienced here in Michigan and then eventually it spread throughout the country was the fact that we really don't manufacture much here anymore. So, you know, I don't know if we're gonna make a massive change, but we stuck to our mission of celebrating, you know, the American automotive industry, the workers, the suppliers, the big three, and we stuck to that and we decided that we were gonna make that product here in the US. And, you know, it's, it's been a great experience. Um, now that brand, is shipped all over the world. Uh, you know, we, we manufacture wheels here. We have great suppliers throughout the U.S. We've tapped all of them out. Uh, we're on back order constantly. It's a very exciting thing to see happen. Uh, and most of all, we're, we're making it here. And, and we're getting to share that with people everywhere from Estonia, Dubai, Australia, uh, England, uh, Norway. Uh, I don't think there's South Africa, Qatar. Uh, we ship product every week all over the world. So. It's exciting to see that transition from growing up in, uh, you know, basically I, I worked in, pl in, in plants and factories that built car parts to go on the cars uh, to uh, the economy crashing and then I decided just to play with cars. If I'm gonna be broke, I'm gonna be broke, broke and happy and I'm gonna build cars and enjoy what I do. And then to get back to manufacturing, something I know very well from growing up and, and being able to uh, create a product that doesn't exist and share that with the world right here out of Detroit um, has, it's been unbelievable. I spend a lot of time out here. The RT Charger's the real deal. An E49. Remember A Charger? I've always got projects on the go, so Shannon's laid up cover helps protect my restorations. I'm Mopar through and through. It's a passion Shannon's understands. I wouldn't insure my cars and bikes with anyone else. Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Call 13 46 46 for a quote. If you have a restoration project, Hare and Forbes has the tools that you need. Look at these restoration products. Shrinker stretchers, dollies, mallets, bead rollers, profile gauges, professional panel restoration kits, and so much more. Now I warn you, enter at your own risk because you will end up buying something. So come along to your Cap City store or browse and buy online at machineryhouse.com.au because Heron Forbes has the range. Fletch, my first memory of a classic car, uh, really my good, good memories would have to be uh, in my grandfather's barn. Uh, one of my grandfathers owned a Lincoln Mercury dealer and he had a collection of some pretty cool cars. Everything from a Mustang to, um, they had a Bronco, but they had a 65 Lincoln Continental in that barn that I used to play in as a kid. And uh, there was something about that car that really drew me to that vehicle. And I remember when I was younger, I would, I would take like pictures of, of a Lincoln Continental, like an ad, and I would cut it out and I would lower it down onto its wheels and I would tape it back together and just crazy stuff before, far before I was customizing cars. Okay, here we got the main man, Adam, how you doing? Good, good Fletch, how about you? Good, good, what do you like, the mic? Yeah, I love this mic, are you kidding me? Yeah, I, like this, I like old school stuff, man, the mics are where it's at. Adam's been going on about the mic like you got no idea. Hey, why, why hide it? Why hide the fact that, you know, like why do you gotta hide microphone equipment? I mean, we're having an interview. That's it. Uh, Adam, you've got to stick with what works, right? Absolutely, man. This is like, this is old school. It's like being on The Price is Right or something, you know? <laughs> I feel like I'm about to spin a wheel. Absolutely. Now, <laughs> speaking of something old, look, I'm, I'm totally confused here. You're going to have to give us the rundown. What is this? This is a, uh, a Biotico built by James Scripps Booth, and he started this project in 1911, and this is a 1913 Biotico. Now, this was a really cool opportunity we had as a business, because you got to remember, we started out in a tiny little one-bay shop, uh, you know, there, there wasn't much talent there like there is here now. And, you know, 14 years later, uh, the Detroit Historical Society is asking us to do a restoration on this forum. So this was a huge opportunity. This is a one of a kind piece of Detroit history here. This is a, it's a piece of automo automotive history. So it was really exciting for us. This was one of the most bizarre cars uh, that I've ever seen. Everybody knows about the Biotico around here because it's like a Dr. Seuss looking contraption. Uh, they called it a cycle car. Um, it was it was one of those times that you know they really were just experimenting. You know there was really no uh, there was no A to Z on car designing. It was really wide open. So um, somebody like James Scripps Booth, um, who decided was an artist and an engineer, uh, expressed himself and wanted to build this cycle car, came up with this Biotico, and it's very unique. But um, what's cool about this thing and restoring this thing is this is very. Um, 
it's a very similar story to a lot of our concept vehicles, even built nowadays. So a lot of the concept cars built in Detroit by the big three, they, you may not see that concept car be built, but there's design cues and there's certain things that are developed on that car that they use in production. So even back here to the 1913 uh, Biotigo built by James Scripp Booth, this was the first liquid-cooled V8 motor to come out of Detroit. So that's kind of cool. There's a, there's a, there's the, the, there's the, a, the, co the copper tube, that's the, yes. right, that's the radiator, right? Yep, yep, all this is the radiator here. And, and there was an electric speedometer on it by Bosch and some other things that you start to see commonplace on vehicles. So, so even back then, uh, a concept vehicle like this, we still stole you know, some engineering and some design cues from it. Uh, even though a 3,800 pound cycle car yep. is probably not the best idea, uh, but it is a very cool. Adam, the guy that designed it, I mean, who was the guy? What, what, did, what did he do? What was his profession? Well, uh, again, he was an artist and an engineer. Now, the Scripps family is, is very Detroit. Uh, Scripps Booth family is a big publishing network. Uh, they still own a lot of networks, uh, but their son James was into vehicles. And Scripps Booth uh, ended up, you know, they ended up manufacturing cars. They had some coupes and some sedans that were very successful. General Motors bought them out. There was a lot of different automotive manufacturers at that time that used each other's parts. And uh, so he, you know, he ended up selling to GM. But, you know, this is with some of the early uh, experiments of vehicles. But just, just the fact that Mob Steel uh, has gotten to a point, uh, and my group of guys have the opportunity to restore this um, and donate back to the city yeah. and have our chance to get a hands on something like this is really a once in a lifetime experience. Uh, and it was really cool that they even trusted us with it because I'm, uh, 15 years ago, there was no way they would have dropped us off at my shop. <laughs> no way. Every weekend around Australia, motoring enthusiasts get together to share their passion for cars and bikes. It's a passion that brings us together. All sorts of people, all sorts of cars and bikes. From the classics of today, to the classics of tomorrow. At Shannon's, we understand enthusiasts. So when it comes to insurance, it's gotta be Shannon's. Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Call 13 46 46 for a quote. If you have a restoration project, Hare and Forbes has the tools that you need. Look at these restoration products. Shrinker stretchers, dollies, mallets, bead rollers, profile gauges, professional panel restoration kits, and so much more. Now I warn you, enter at your own risk because you will end up buying something. So come along to your Cap City store or browse and buy online at machineryhouse.com.au because Heron Forbes has the range. Have a go at this 1968 Lincoln Continental getting ready for SEMA. Jeez, it's all going on here, Adam. Yeah, well, this is typical. Uh, there's actually a term for it. It's called SEMA crunch time. We have a 68 Continental that we're getting together for SEMA. Uh, we got about a week and a half before it goes on the transporter. Massive changes to this car. Uh, this is a testament of the talent of my team out here. Yeah. What, are you, what are you doing to it? Um, this is, this is a, a customer in Arizona. This is a total mass transformation here. Body lines have been changed, uh, suspension. We've actually put a modern engine in it, so we have a, a, a five liter uh, motor that's uh, basically you'd find in a, a new Mustang, but this is the Roush Racing 740 horsepower version of that, so. Of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you have, you have a you know, fully, fully fly-by-wire pedal, all new drivetrain, uh, you know, four-link suspension, air ride, uh, again, Massive changes, all the interior, everything. There's not, there's not a part in this car that we haven't touched. Every job you do is so uniquely different. Um, you, you, you still must get a buzz out of every project that you see roll out the door when it's completed. Oh yeah, I mean, each one of these cars essentially are, um, you know, we're just, you know, we're building something different. You know, we want each one of these cars to go out to be unique. I'm not mass producing anything here. So uh, this customer is gonna have a very unique vehicle. It's, it's you know, they have their own identity. Uh, we do something different to it every time, which is not very profitable to do that, but uh, it is a lot of fun, you know. So you're reinventing the wheel essentially every time. You know, we have to figure out how to make this motor fit and make it run right and, you know, and it, it's just, it, it creates a lot of challenges because once you change one thing, it's like, it's like a windfall. Yeah. Everything else changes it behind it. Transmission and drivetrain and, you know, uh, everything. So, uh, you know, you have to cut apart the engine compartment and new cross members. And uh, it's just, it's a really, it's a really big task. But like you said, when it's done, we have something unique, uh, something that's, you know, one-off design, uh, something the customer can actually enjoy and drive yeah. with those modern conveniences of the motor and stuff like that. Good on you, Adam. Look, it's crunch time for SEMA. 
Thank you so much for your time. Absolutely I mean, it, it's all going on here yeah. at Mobsteel. Thank hey, you. I'm glad you guys came over here. I appreciate it. And uh, we always uh, enjoy the love from Australia. Australia Pleasure meeting you. Thanks, Adam. How good was Adam and Mobsteel? What a place. In 2015 and 2016, I had the liberty of featuring a lovable character by the name of Wes Myrick, 93 years of age, living near Detroit here in Michigan, United States of America. Now, unfortunately, Wes has passed away this year. There's no doubt that Wes was a much-loved character and returning once again to Michigan in 2017 to visit Wes's family and to pay our respects, I would like to end today's show with sharing with you some old footage featuring Wes. I hope you enjoy it. Until next week, no matter where you're watching Classic Restos from, please ride and drive safe. I'm Fletch, and I thank you very much for watching. I can't remember how old, but I've always been fascinated by cars. Cars have meant the world to me, outside of my family and my friends, and I'm so fascinated, and that's why I have such a, I guess, eclectic collection because there's something special and wonderful about every one that I've owned. I guess that's what keeps pushing me all the time. If you love what you're doing, it makes, it, uh, it makes life so exciting. Everything about the hobby is fun. It's fun to buy them, it's fun to share them with people, and it's fun to uh, drive everything about them. Uh, it's not like a boat. When you get rid of a boat, they, they say that's a happy day when you buy it and a happy day when you get rid of it, but cars are not like that. You fall in love and it's forever, and even though you don't have them anymore, we still have a lot of wonderful memories. I love the cars and I love all the people that I've met. It's been a wonderful life, and uh, I've always said happiness is a full tank of gas. You can like and follow us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Classic Restos TV and watch catch-up episodes at shannons.com.au. Classic Restos, proudly brought to you by Shannon's Insurance, Hair and Forbes Machinery House and Pace Farm.